Okay, so when you call this method insert, what it actually does is uh, it inserts the record into the table. And if it is done successfully, it returns the row ID on which number the item, the row has been inserted. Otherwise, it will return a minus one if any error occurs. So basically, uh, when you enter like fifth record, you will get a number five or or uh, or an ID, whatever you have entered. Okay. Otherwise, you will get a minus one. So you get to know that this method will return something. And what we can do, we can return the same in our method. It returns along. So we will return the long back into this method. So this method insert is now completed and you can use it to insert a value into the table. Similarly we need a couple of more methods for update and delete. So let me just quickly copy this one and this one would be update and instead of insert I have to use the method name update now this method takes one more extra parameter that is where arguments so the table content values where clause and where arguments these four are required so table is table name content values is content values now the third one is the where clause so where do, where do you want to enter where do you, which id do you want to update so here we have to create one where clause and that would be a string where id equals to id so this is our way clause and we don't need this line here. So that means that when we call the update method, we will update the first name, last name, address, salary, and lastly, where do you want to update? You have to provide the ID. The ID should not be null or minus one or anything because otherwise it will not update it, right? So you will provide the where clause in here. And lastly, you need where arguments, which will provide null. So it's like uh, you can change the arguments. Uh, I mean, so you can provide a question mark here, and then you can set the arguments in the. You can change multiple arguments uh, using the uh, within this uh, where clause. In this where arguments. Basically, it's like uh, you want to set uh, uh, change or update this value where first name is this and last name is this and address is this so you provide first name last name and address in where clause and in the where argument you will provide the value so that would that would be like uh, uh, making it uh, uh, structured or basically it's like well no mind okay so it will again return the row, uh, it will return the number of rows affected. So, number of rows affected, it is what we will get. So, if it is zero, the number of rows affected, that means the change that didn't, didn't happen. And if the number of rows affected is one, then it is fine. If it is more than one, now you know something crazy happened, right? And lastly, we will need a delete. So in the delete we don't need the string first name, last name and double salary because we already we are deleting the method, right? We are deleting the record. So what we need, we don't even need the content values. We only need the where clause and the method is mydv.delete. So we have to provide the table name, the where clause and the where arguments. So we don't need these values. So these three things are required. These three methods are done. We are done with create, update and delete method. But we haven't done anything for retrieving the data. 
So we will try to retrieve the data in another method and we will create one simple method public um, cursor get all records. This is a very simple method we are going to create here and it will return as a cursor. Now what is cursor? Let's see that. Okay, so basically cursor is very simple and it is a temporary buffer area that holds results returned from a database query. It is basically simply a temporary buffer in which the rows returned from the query will be stored and you can traverse in the result using the methods given by this cursor. So this uh, cursor will give you methods like move to first, move to last, move to next or is after last and so on so that you can easily go forward or backward in your query. It will give you a list of, uh, let me just show you. Okay, you remember this table. What this cursor will control will have, this cursor will have all of these entries. Alright, so you can write move to first, you will move to this place. If you say move to next, you can go to the second place. You can retrieve the data from this row. So the good thing about the cursor is that it loads only one row. Uh, in the mem in the memory, right? Whatever row you want, you just get it, and then you can use it. So let's write our cursor here. But before that, let's write a query here. So return my db dot query raw query, and in the raw query, you have to provide the Query and null. So you have to mention the query also. There is a query. And your quick query is, uh, could be like uh, select star from table name. Right? You would like to do something like this select a star from table name, run this query, and return the results back. This is one way of retrieving the data. You can also use mydb dot query, and this method takes uh, table name, column names, selection, selection arguments, group by, sort by. And it's up to you. So you can provide something like table name, the columns you want to retrieve. If you don't know and if you want to retrieve all the columns, you can pass null. Selection null, argument null, group by null, null, and order by null. And limit. Out of limit if you like this. Okay, so this is this is another way of running your query. Both of these lines, this line and these two lines will do the same thing. You can create a, a raw query and you can pass it here or if you don't want to create a raw query, you want to uh, run your query structure, uh, you want to have your query structure well structured and you have columns in different uh, variable, you have selection arguments, you have order by and other fields, then you can use this one. But right now both of these lines are similar they will do the same thing. We can use either one, it doesn't matter. This will return us a cursor. And we will use this cursor and we will uh, actually traverse in this cursor to fetch the records one by one. Okay. So first let's do a couple of things. Let's close this. Let's go to our main activity. And uh, we have already created all of the stuff that is required in the main activity. Now let's create an object of my DB helper. Alright. Now I have a method here that is on create. I will I will have another method that is on start. I will implement this method. And in this method I will say db helper dot 
open the I will open my database in the only start method and I will I will close my database in the on stop method. That means that when this activity gets open, I will I will uh, open my database and when this activity gets destroyed, I will close the connection with the database. That is clearly simple, right? Okay, so here in the on create we cannot access anything as you can see because our database gets open in the on start method so what we will do uh, we will s okay we need to implement these buttons the listener on these buttons so now i will show you another way to implement the listener on the buttons um, first let me make all of these as fields Uh, just a second, it's almost done. And lastly, T. So all of these are fields now and you can see that all of these are created here and why did you do that? Because we will access all of these fields and everything outside the onCreate method. So let's create an init method. Create method in it, and what we will do, we will move all of this thing from here to in it. So this is simple, right? Your own create method will become easy to understand or manageable, right? What you can do, you can just minimize this one. You know this is in it, and you are initializing all of the fields and everything inside this method, so you don't have to look it every time you traverse through your code and. Uh, the more you see the different code, the use the the more important code you will must you will do more. It makes sense, right? Now in the init, you need to do a couple of more things. Onto these buttons, you have to set some listeners. So we can set listeners on each of these buttons. Btn insert dot set on click listeners, and I will say my Um, db buttons listener. Okay, so now what is this db button listener? We are implementing an on click listener here. Let me just move it from here to just below this. And I need to do this thing for all of them. So, btn update, btn delete, btn load all. So, all of these are, um, we are setting the on click listener onto this db buttons listener. And this is our db buttons listener. And inside the on click method, what I can do, I can use a switch case. Switch, read or get id and case out of id dot btn insert and similarly btn insert btn update btn delete btn load all Okay, so basically when you click on the insert button, 
it will it will trigger this flash map and we will get inside the on click method in the on click method we will check which button we have clicked whether we have clicked the insert button or the update button so whatever it is we will execute the code inside that only so only this part from here this case will get executed the rest of the case will not get executed if you know java already right okay so in the insert what you have to do you have to simply call my db or uh, not my db this time you have to call the db helper db helper dot insert and in that you have to provide the id at name last name address and salary but the thing is that the id is not compulsory so we will provide minus one here in the id now the f name is the first name and you can type the first name by et first name dot get text dot to trim dot trim this is what you have to write to get the first name okay what you can do to make it simple also you can create a method you can create a method get text uh, get value Let's create a method get value and let me just remove all of this. In the main activity we have the method name get value. We will provide an edit text here. Edit text and what we will return from here is first we will check if String data is very text. It doesn't matter, just simply return. Return edit text dot get text dot to string dot print. Okay, we will return this string. And this way you don't have to write again and again the thing that you are going to write, right? You have to write this get text dot to string dot trim every time. Right? Now you don't have to do that. Now you just write get value and you pass the edit text in it. So get value and the second one is et last name. Then we have get value et address. What do we have next? You can see it like this. The last one is the selfie and it is of type double. So we will say get value. Let me just put our enter here. Get value and et salary. Let's put an enter here. Now we have to cast it into a double. So using double of value of. Okay, so this will return us either the row or minus one. So we can store that into a long variable long result okay now if this result is not uh, double equals to minus one if it is minus one we will display a toast message okay. Okay, so the toast message is some error occurred while inserting. Else, if it is not minus one, right, then we will simply display a toast message. Um, data inserted successfully. ID because we will get the ID into this result and ID is given. This is what we are doing right now for ourselves so that we get to know. Okay, so we can now run this for the insert. 